Can I greet you all in Jesus' name? Amen. I want us to read the book of John 18 from 1 to 9. Having said these things, Jesus left with his disciples and went across the ravine of the kindred. There was a garden there, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who was betraying him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having obtained the Roman cohorts and some officers from the high priest and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Verse 4. Then Jesus, knowing all that was about to happen to him, went to them and asked, whom do you want? They answer him, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus said, I'm he. And Judas, who was betraying him, was also standing with them. And when Jesus said, I'm he, they drew back and fell to the ground. And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you, that I'm he. So if you want me, let this man go on their way. I just want to read verse 7 again. Again, he asked them, Whom do you want? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. And Jesus answered, I've told you that I'm he. So if you want me, let this man go on their way. And this was fulfilled, was to fulfill and verify the words he has spoken. Of those whom you have given me, I have not lost even one. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Allow me to share with you a small message. Today. Where I was reading this, I found this a very small message. I was asking myself why the crucifixion of Jesus. And then I understood that for him to allow him himself to die that way was part of his obedience. Today, I want to talk about uh, obedience of the Lord to God's will. The meaning of that is a teaching to us. Obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ to God's will was to teach us to God's will. If we can learn that Jesus agreed How to die that way. If you read from verse, especially uh, verse 4, verse 4, where Jesus, the Bible says, he knew all that was about to happen. He knew all. All things that were about to happen. And to my surprise, when they were searching for him, he went forward. He didn't run away. He didn't find some ways of protecting himself. He wanted to fulfill the will of his father. To him was obedience. 
Even when they say they want Jesus of Nazareth. He said, when he say I'm here, when they, they fall down. To prove that he understood what he was facing. He, he never retaliated. In his heart, there was the issue of fulfilling the will of his father. I've read about our Lord Jesus Christ teaching us his obedience even unto death through the cross in Golgotha. Okay, look at this verse. Here you see verse 5. They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus said, I'm he. And Judas, who was betraying him, was also standing with them. When Jesus said, I'm he, they drew back and fell And again, he asked them, here, yeah, when Jesus asked disciples, Judas and all those people, Judas was still the disciple who could still change his mind. They fall back and fall to the ground. In other words, they drew back and fall. But this man was ready to die. Our Lord was ready. He asked them when they were done. Who, who, who are you searching? He never said, disciples strike them. They stood up and remove dust from their clothes. He never said, can you see, I'm powerful. He knew all he's supposed to go through. He never said, can you see, I'm anointed. He had all reasons to prove that he can still defeat them in a minute. But he understood that he's supposed to die through them. He's supposed to be crucified for all of us, which was part of his obedience. Tell your neighbor, my friend, you need to obey God even when it's tough. This is the lesson. I was learning that one of the things that makes us you know, to grumble and worry. And we find that we cannot allow anything to happen as it is. It's because we don't know that we are supposed to go through that. Let me just show you in John 10, verse 17 to 18, you will see our Lord there, he never blame anyone. Just go, John 10. John 10. John 10. Read 17. In, we, we use English. Verse 17. Yes. It is therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Jesus uh, took his life of obedience even unto death. To extend that when our God say, if you want to die, go and die now. Jesus will just still listen. But when God say, go and die for them, Jesus will say, Amen. You know, Jesus could not question his father. If he say, go and die on the cross, 
Jesus will say yes. Jesus will say yes. Is the command I've been given. If you read there, you will see that he never blamed anyone. He said, voluntarily I've been given this to go through this. I laid down my life. No one is killing me. Even if Judas is involved. Even if his Pharisees were involved. Sanhedrin is involved. But it's me who laid down my life to lift it up. What he wanted to see was the will of his father. The will of this father was that he died on the cross. He will draw many to himself. He was not looking on what will happen. He was not looking on what he will experience on the, on the cross. He was looking on the joy that was set before The will of the Father that will bring many to himself. Look at this verse in Philippians 2 verse 8. Because the Bible says, after he was found in terms of his outward appearance, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the Father, even to the point of his death to the cross. He humbled himself as a man. In fact, the first thing was he was confirmed to be a man. He agreed. So that he must come and be born. He and he also now the cross came. He agreed. Listen, even if he denied, he he could not leave heaven. He was doing it for all of us. Our sins were many. But he obeyed his father for the sake of our lives. He left his place of residence and obey when God say, live there and go and die for them. I want to tell you there are some things you are going through. If you know you will go through them. You won't even pray for them. Those things. You won't even pray to change. Jesus prayed to die. He prayed he was ready to die on the cross. He wanted the strength to be crucified. Think about when God say you will go through this, you say thank you Lord. I'm accepting. I learned through his obedience. That many things we are praying against. We were wasting time. What God wants us to do. There is something he has in store for us on the other side. We have to go also our cross. This is our obedience. Going through your cross. A cross can be a challenge. It can be stagnation. It can be difficulties. Everybody here. He will go to his cross. And that cross, after and that, there is victory. I don't know if you're hearing that. After that cross, there is victory. Can I tell you what you don't know? If you are Christian, your life is not different with the one of Christ. You must have Judah, your own Judas, your own Peter, your own Peter. All those people represent people around you. But now, your obedience to his way must be following the example of the obedience of Christ to the cross. Sometimes, it's like you are losing your life. But you end up finding it. If you read Mark 10, 
32 to 34 you will find you will find what happens which was known whatever that was happening he knew just read that verse mama in Mark 10 Mark 10 32 34 32 our Lord knew our Lord knew what he says what well. Okay. Erin, now they were on the road going up to Jerusalem. Yes. And Jesus was going before them. And they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. Then he took the twelve aside again and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will, not, they will mock him and scorch him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. Here Jesus was playing. There's something that I want to tell you about what was happening when he was going through the will of his father. When he was going towards Jerusalem, I mean, Jesus was different with us. Because normally if we speak what we'll experience, people will run away from us. Jesus was ahead after he spoke some things to them. So they were afraid. They were questioning. And he was moving in front. So there was a gap. So he turned back. And look at this. He began to explain everything. Jesus was ready to tell them, if you won't face this, Jesus it's better you run away. He explained everything. I will even be killed there. Can you see when you get that people who say, you see what? This will happen. This will happen. This will happen. This will happen. This he had grounds of speaking about what he will face in life. And he was ready to face it. And he said, when I reach there, you crucify me and kill me. They will scorch me, they will do whatever. And he said to his disciples, but on the third day, I will rise again. I, I love what this man did. The man of Galilee. Because many people, they didn't know that he was Messiah. They were just this man is a man of Galilee. He knew what he was going through. And he never wanted to change it. Which was part of of God's will. His obedience was to say, I will endure pain for the sake of many to be saved. He had a mind of us when he was going towards Jerusalem. He had an opportunity to run away or to alter the situation. But he had all clarity of what will happen. And he say, I'm going through this. And I will enter there, come out from here, this, until I die. But I will rise again. Allow me to tell you this. We have a very serious today in the body of Christ. As Christians, we don't know what we will face. Whatever we face, give us a direction of prayer. To change it. Not knowing that it is the will of God for you. 
sometimes God gives us assignment which is very hard. Like the one that will destroy our lives. Not knowing that if we lose our life for him, we will find it. We need to be Christians who is not afraid of losing everything. Going and explaining all you need to go through. And you end up reaching a point of saying, I will die there. Without being afraid of losing none. This shows that he was a man of purpose. As Christians, when we have got obedience, we must reach a level where we become a man of purpose. We understand what will happen after the We understand what will happen after a challenge. what will happen after sickness. God will never leave us. This is a lesson of obedience. Let me try to tell you this small message. The message of the cross teaches us the obedience to our Father. Jesus Jesus. who will choose the way you wanted to die. Jesus will say, Jesus it's, better, way. it's better they shoot me or <inaudible> give me poison. <inaudible> he knew all, <inaudible> but he went through all. <inaudible> There's a time when he came to, you know, a place of prayer, Getseman. <inaudible> When others were sleeping, the people were coming, were coming to arrest him. You will pray to receive strength to face all. But he knew these people are coming to kill him. Can you see when someone come among them? He knew Judas will come and kiss him. But the kiss was not a real kiss. What if you know what you will go through? How are you going to behave? Jesus knew all. I was telling Mama this morning. I said, Mama, I want people to read the answers of Jesus. When he was asked by Pilate, what do you want to do? When he was asked by Pilate, what do you want to do? Even by Herod. He never defended himself. When Pilate said, are, are you a king? He said, uh, you said are it. You are the one who said it. He didn't say, I am the king. He said, you, you are saying it. He said, you are saying it. You are the one who is saying it. When Herod asked him, and asked miracles, he kept quiet. He kept he knew if he can speak one word, it will stop the plan of his father. God. He never tried to prove anything to bring out a change to the plan of his father. He kept quiet and said, if I speak with Herod, Herod will change and from there he will attack the Sanhedrin. The plan of the father will die down. How many times we affect negatively the plan of our father? Because we know. If we know sometimes, it can really affect us. I don't know if you're hearing me. There was a time where I found that uh, finding a revelation of what you are going through and the people who are involved it can make us to change the plan of the world. Automatically, you just stand up and say, you are the one who's wishing me. I found Stop it. Stop what you're doing. Whereas God wants to do it by himself. 
allow these people to reach you until they fail to reach you. Come and confess. Don't try to defend yourself. Our Lord never defended I don't know if you're hearing me. I said, don't defend yourself. If you want to see that truly you are in the line of obedience of your Father, carry on with it. When people are insulting you, carry on obeying when people are fighting you. Listen, at the end you are a winner. As at the end you are a winner. In Mark 8 verse 31, I want us to read these verses when you go home. Mark 8 31. I want us to read these verses when you go home. It says what? Mark 8 31. Mark 8 verse 31. Just read mama. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days he rise again. From nowhere, Jesus will be teaching. Later, he just change everything. You know what? The son of man will suffer many things. This and this and this, but there will be issue of resurrection. I don't think disciples were easy to say amen on. He will teach them, teach them, teach them. They say amen, 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 amen. amen. He began to reveal what he will go through. If you are a pastor, you say, you know, there is something that is going to happen. People are going to connive. And plan against my They will shoot me in my spinal cord. And I will sit in the wheelchair. But I will stop preaching. You know what will happen? You will see the members dropping. You will see, yeah? Always they will be looking around. Who's coming to shoot the pastor? And he will preach on the wheelchair. Many things that happens to us. Thank God our God will hide them from us. If not, your Christianity will never stay. But also it's affecting Mara us affecta. in our Christian level. You know, uh, one time I heard the voice of God saying, you will deal with a mess. I will send Christians who are wrongly wired to correct them to a right way. It won't be easy, but I'm with you. So the moment when I heard that message, I came and speak about it. When I look at the people, I began to say, Mama, this is the mess that God is speaking about. The Christians that have been robbed, they will come to me empty. The Christians that they have already rejected because the they'll come to me with the same anger. How are you going to cope with such people? I began to understand that my journey of obedience to his will, it won't be easy. Because you take people closer, they, they will still do what they've been done. There. So you need to know why God is allowing that to you. If it is your assignment, He will see you through. There are some people who are here today who are listening to me. Can I tell you this? Whatever you are going through, carry on with the obedience. There is issue of rising again. I see you coming up on top of your enemies. You are about to be something. You are about to be something. You are about to be something. You about to be something. You about to be something. I say you are about to be something. Can I tell you this? Sometimes God will say, lose all for me. 
Lose all for me. Lose your money for me. Lose your marriage for me. Lose your house for me. And when you obey him, you find it's like you are doing the impossible. You find it's like you are waiting. And when after you do that, miracles will happen very fast. And you find nothing is happening. Can I tell you this? There was a first day in the grave. Second day, there was the third day. That third day is coming. I said, that third day is coming. When Jesus was on the grave, after death, everybody was just saying, uh, it's over with you. But not knowing that there's a third day, your obedience can lead you to be like you are silent. But the day when God rises you up, no one will be able to stop you. There's no grave that will stop you. There's no cave that will stop you. Carry on with your obedience. Carry on with your obedience. Sometimes when God allows us now, to obey him, him, it is not so easy and it is so, so good. It is not so easy. I will give you one of the obedience we had with Mama. When you are called by God to go on the same obedience of Christ, it will never be easy. You know what happened? I resigned my job. We sold everything for our children to go to school. Everything we had. I spent five months praying without, before I started the church. And from there, no income, nothing. Selling everything. And people say, are you called? I say, I will obey. Because you must lose your life to find it for Christ. And people were asking me the same question. Asking me the same question. Do you think God is with you? If you don't reach that point, you are not a Christian. But if you want everything to work for you, you are not a Christian. There must be a lesson you must go through. And that lesson sustain you in the future. You can worship God when you are empty and when you are full. But you must pass the college of God when you are obeying and the obedience of and Christ of losing your life for the Lord. Lord. Can I tell you this? God will make your life to shine. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are some people here what you are facing God say you are losing your life you are losing your life, losing your life. for me you will find it. There is a resurrection that is coming your way. You will never be the same. I say you will never be the same. This year people will know that you are around if you believe shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to see the obedience of Christ, obey when he speaks. Let it be your command. Rejoice when there's persecution. You are not the one who caused it. Rejoice when you are sick. You are not the one who brought that sickness. You know that there is joy that is set before you. Your obedience here of doing what he says you must do. Don't stop doing what you are doing. Carry on with what God wants you to do. Rejoice where you are. You will see the fruits in the future. You won't die where you are. Don't be happy of 
a magic result. Rejoice when God does it. If it allows you to suffer, allow it. But don't lose obedience. If it allows pain to come to you, enjoy it. But don't lose obedience. If it allows rejection to come your way, persecution to come your way, there is a third day. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. The death of our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us to obey him even when it's tough. Teaches us that there is hope even when there is nothing to be visible. The death of our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us to agree that if he was able to go through this, we can go through death through him and conquer. That's what the Bible says. The suffering of the present time will never be compared with the glory that shall reveal to you. I see the glory from next week. I see the glory that it will be coming to someone. People are about to experience anointing they have never seen. Today I'm here to declare that the revival has started. I said the revival has started. There is a glory that will descend upon your life. You are about to shake someone. Your obedience must not be altered by the shame you are facing. It must not be changed by the circumstances you are going through. Your obedience must be so strong and strengthen you to do the more. You could still face the enemy like Jesus. You could still carry on when there is no way to carry on. I want to declare to someone who is here that you are about to see your enemy praising your God. I say you are about to see because of what God wants to do in your life. I see the glory. I see the glory. I see the glory coming to your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I want to finish this small message to you. The resurrection power we need to put it there. Because your Christianity is determined by how far you endure. Christianity is not determined by the courage of power. It's determined by how far you endure and not altered in your obedience from God's voice. If truly you carry on on God's voice, voice, that is Christianity for you. When you are obeying what God is saying, it's Christianity for you. It's determined by your obedience in his will, not by the courage of power. I don't know if you're hearing that. Okay, so, so the power will respond to the obedience. You are moving on. Listen, God will never allow you to be empty when you are enduring in your obedience. When you are moving forward, there will be the grace of power from the Holy Spirit that will come upon you. I don't know if you're hearing me. If God wants to so honor you. you. He will leave you sometimes alone. When God wants to do something with you, He will leave people who are supposed to help you, not to help you. He will allow rejection. He will allow persecution. But your obedience to His will will bring celebration by anybody around you. Let me prophesy something. From today, the death of our Lord 
is about to bring the glory upon your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I want to give you this small message so that you understand that the suffering with Christ is valuable for us. The suffering with Christ is so important for us. How do you suffer with Christ? It's when you have Christ, but you are conformed to his way. To be conformed to his way is not to do what Christ said. It's to do what he did. To be conformed to his way It's not to do what he said. It's to do what he did. 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 